Brian Kidd. He's a... What are you? What is your role here? What's your title? I'm the Specialized Oceanographic Technician for the uh, UR Sharp here. Okay. And uh, the reason we're going to... I'm talking about Brian is uh, Brian is the expert on the multi-beam systems. So Brian's going to tell us a little bit about what a multi-beam system is and how it works. And you're okay if I put this online, aren't you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. There's your written consent right there. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, Brian is sitting at uh, the multi-beam operator station. And Brian's going to explain to us a little bit about what, what kind of equipment they use, uh, try to explain to us a little bit about what multi-beam is and what they're getting out of the multi-beam, and um, hopefully we'll figure out what the scientists do with the multi-beam data when they get done. So take it away, Brian. All right. Uh, again, I'm the multi-beam technician aboard the UR Sharp, and uh, on the Sharp we operate the Rezon 8101 shallow water uh, multi-beam. It operates in depths uh, up to around 400 meters, give or take. Um, the shallow water multi-beam operates with 101 beams. So as opposed to a single beam echo sounder, the multi-beam um, gives you 101 individual depth readings along a swap. Um, so you can kind of see in this image, this is the actual swap that we're getting uh, right there. And each one of these is 101 individual depths, and each depth is associated with a um, latitude longitude. Um, this, on the other, th other part of the screen here, is something else that's translated from the uh, ping return on the multi-beam, and we can display a black and white side scan image, which is just based on the intensity of return signal as the sound hits the bottom. Um, anything that is uh, hard, like a rock or a shipwreck, will uh, give you a harder ping return and make it darker. Sorry, I don't have a shipwreck. No shipwreck to show you right here, so you could really uh, see what was going on. But if there was a shipwreck, you would have a real dark outline of the wreck, and then as the sound is kind of moving past it, you would have a shadow on the opposite side of it, um, which would allow you to determine how high it sticks up off the bottom. Okay. So this is, uh, that's the side scanning that's component the, of it? That's the side scanning component of the, uh, of the multi-beam. Now can you have side scan and not have multi-beam? Um, yes. Okay. They, are, they make specific side scans that you tow. And um, yeah, that's, that's another okay. story. But yeah. So you actually use the side scanning sonar along with the multi-beam? Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just, um, data that's translated from the bathymetry, you can actually use the uh, ping return and, and give yourself a side scan image, a black and white picture of what the bottom looks like. But the, the actual multi-beam data is, um, depending on the bottom depth, is pinging anywhere from 40 times a second to, I think, two or three times a second. Um, so in shallower water, you're getting higher resolution data. You know, obviously there's more pings mm -hmm. reaching the You got more pings because it doesn't have as far to go, so you can right. uh, space them a lot closer together as opposed to a deeper water. It takes it a while to go down and come back. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So when we're doing a survey, um, we can kind of zoom in here. And this is our acquisition software, Navisoft, which uh, we're hoping to replace sometime soon here with uh, IPAC. Let me see if I can get over to, all right, do not center vessel, try to zoom in on, eh, not a lot, not me. anyway, this is a little grid here with multiple lines in there, so uh, when this video screen is pumped up to the bridge, so they see this exact same screen, and uh, the captain will use this left-right indicator to tell him how far he is off the line. You can see the ship's way over here right now because we're replaying the survey. But if he were to come over here and hop on this line, this would you know, tell him he's 25 meters to the left or right of the line. So we would run that line. I would start recording data throughout the line. We'd turn around, come back down the next line. I'd hit record again. And it's just kind of like mowing the lawn. Okay, so you do a whole lot of parallel lines. Yeah. And then you have overlap, I'm assuming? Yes, we have overlap. Um, the sonar is rated to 7.4 times the water depth. 
that's the coverage you'll get with your swap. Mm -hmm. um, I usually do around five to five and a half times the water depth just to give some o overlap between lines. Mm -hmm. And then I'll set the lines up to give a little bit more overlap as well. Okay. When you get to the outer beams of a multi-beam, sometimes you get a little you know, variation and shakiness in it. So mm -hmm. usually we have to delete that step okay. out during the processing. Okay. Um, once we collect all the data, uh, I convert it into software called Keras, which is a popular uh, hydrographic processing software. Um, that allows me to create uh, various products, digital terrain models, which is just a 3D map of the um, survey. Um, you can also do neat little fly-throughs through the data. Um, you can superimpose a nautical chart over top of your survey area, so you can kind of you know, look at the survey with a nautical chart in the background. Um, and we, as far as acquisition goes, we collect the data with a POSMV. What's a POSMV? POSMV is a... Um, Acronym, G please. G <laughs> it's a GPS and uh, vessel motion sensor. Okay. So it gives all of our heave, vessel heave, as the ship is moving up and down over waves. Mm -hmm. As the ship's rolling, it'll give us the roll data, and as, as there's pitch involved as well. So it allows you to go ahead and compensate and pull out the uh, the movement of the ship from the actual re uh, returning signals, and you can go ahead and kind of uh, compensate or subtract that out, and then exactly, exactly, it's like the ship was never moving. Right, take out all the vessel motion. Okay. Yep. Cool. So if I was going to build a multi-beam system, what do I need? I, obviously, you've got a couple monitors here for being able to monitor it. What other equipment is involved in uh, setting up a multi-beam? Uh, we have the sonar head, which is up in the shop. We can go up there and take a look at that. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we have our, the deck unit, which provides power to the uh, system and then also uh, transmits the signal from the sonar head to the deck unit then to our computers, which records it in this acquisition software. Okay. And then uh, POSMV, where's that unit? POSMV is uh, on the bridge. Okay, and they use that for more than just the multi-beam. Yes. They use that for a lot of other yeah, things yep. as well. We have various uh, feeds coming in. This is coming from the POSMV. It's a uh, PPS signal, which acts as a uh, kind of a time sinking of all the data. Okay. So when you have a a sonar ping of 101 depths. It'll be in a data packet that is uh, associated with that specific PPS. Mm -hmm. Along with the sonar ping, you'll have a um, heat pitch roll uh, data sentence, mm -hmm. which will you know take all the vessel motion out. You'll have your GPS position, and um, I think that's it. So when you actually look at the raw data, if you open it up in various editors, you can see various small packets of, of data associated with that specific PPS. This is a kind of a multi-com port um, system, which we have vessel motion data going in here, um, GPS, and uh, ship's heading, I believe is that one. Okay. So all that stuff feeds in here. And yeah, that all goes right into this, this computer. It's like an awful lot of data is coming back from this thing. How, what kind of storage requirements do you think you need for well, uh, uh, a standard uh, you know, one-hour run or something like that? Usually in an hour, I think we're collecting like half half a gigabyte of data. Okay. We're running constantly. You know. Half a gig in an hour? Yeah. Okay. So that adds up pretty quick. Yeah, it does. So right now the uh, R2R project, that's an NSF project right now, that they're, they're designing uh, that system to be able to archive a lot of this data. So that kind of, is that handy, being able to store it someplace? And yes, definitely. Because yeah. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest complaints I usually hear is like, you know, we got just so much data that you know, we just can't house it all and we need some place to put it. Right. right. Yeah, I have all my data stored on just external hard drives right now and mm -hmm. some uh, various DLT tapes. Okay. So that would be nice to... Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And then, uh, in addition to this, then what it, what actually is, emits the sounds or the the pings and the uh, sonar that's being emitted from the bottom? Um, we can actually go up and take a look at the sonar head. I can kind of explain that.